Well, how and does that affect the marriage, Father? If and, and this is where I'm needing you to correct me because this is this is the hill I'm dying on here. Is, is I've got to help people understand this. It's, it, it's, it, it boils down to this: if you marriage is only marriage, what happens before your day of marriage, everything that happens after your marriage. No, if you choose marriage like a dance, the husband accepts the duty to lead, and, and the, the wife, wife the duty to the duty to follow. It's not domineering. It's it's not abuse. Um, you know, Dietrich von Hildebrand, who I studied in philosophy at Franciscan University, said we should distinguish between the meaning of marriage, which is love, and its purpose, which I gave earlier is procreation, right. union, Unity. and get to heaven. So marriage is a vocation along with the vocations of consecrated life and single life with those three objectives unitive in sharing the procreative and open to life and get your spouse to heaven. Um, and, 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 and when you don't understand that, you're never going to succeed in the marriage. And so I'm sorry, I cut you off, but it's no, just, no, you when, can. It's, when, you're when, you, when you choose marriage, just like the dance, the husband says, okay, I'll take the duty of leading. And the wife says, okay, I'll take the duty of following. They're equal, but complementary. They're reciprocal. They're not one greater than the other because you can't have a dance without both and you can't have a marriage without both. I hope that makes sense. It does, but what it says in the catechism are the two things required are consent, mutual consent, mm -hmm. and that you had the um, the ability. The um, There were no impediments. No impediments. So Those are the impediments, like I said, like uh, if, the, if the man is impotent and he's... Well, but, uh, but let's, let me do with my examples. But if the people... On the day of their marriage, both, I think of a specific couple I know. They were uh, in their mid-20s. They both went to college. They were both mature. They both went to two marriage encounters led by Catholics and Catholic priests. Then they got married in the church properly, and they even taught pre-cana classes later. They didn't practice. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they used NFP and um, had nine children. And then at one point later, the wife left. And she said, well, we were never married. Well, and, and she said it was her maturity. But and I thought, who well, who said that? Her or the, the church? The wife. She yeah, left but, her husband. No, no, the wife doesn't have that authority to declare that. Well, the that's church. what she was writing in her annulment document. And no, that's but where the, I go is, where's the maturity church, there? If the church, we the, heaven has to follow the church. If the church declares something uh, we don't declare something invalid. The church has the authority to declare something invalid. Now, I don't know all the details of the, of the, of the situation. Of now, if she can prove that she didn't understand what marriage was when she entered into it, then yes, yeah, she has an argument and grounds for an annulment. But I would find it hard to believe that that most cases fall in that category. Um, you know, most cases you do have an understanding of what what marriage entails yeah. um now if she again not knowing the details here if she had ample proof that that she was immature and did not know and understand what marriage meant or they were only getting married because she was pregnant uh then there's a lack of free will um if if uh she got married not knowing that he um you know had no intent to be uh uh, to keep right, but fidelity. none of those things existed. I'm on the other side here. I'm with yeah. my follow-up question is, and this is kind of like a plea from the lay person to the priest, um, our instruction to you. And in their case, as well as many, many, because they come to me that we've heard a, um, let's pretend they go to, you, you know, your church or pick Father Sal. And they go to Father Sal's church and a husband and a wife have been going there for 20 years and the priest has been giving them all the sacraments. And then uh, in this case, the wife left and had an affair. And then she met with, I've, this is something I've seen at least twice. And then she met with the priest with her, her lover, her mister, mistresses, which, right. And then the priest said, oh yeah, you could probably get an annulment. And then they don't consider the husband, Sal, you know, Sally's husband, Joe. Right. And so the, the frustrating part, and I know I'm taking a little trajectory change here because of those things that we're saying, wait, we, we, all those things are in place. The priests will often say, yeah, you know what, you should file for an annulment. And then I've had them actually welcome the mistress and the mister into the church. And, and so 
the reason I'm so passionate about this is these people in my groups are saying my priest is caring more about the person leaving the marriage. Right. The but but remember, a misuse or abuse of annulments doesn't make the annulment process Correct. invalid. Correct. And it's it's the same with uh, uh, with the priesthood. Just because there's been a few bad priests who have not followed the rules and have not been faithful doesn't make the priesthood bad. Uh, it means some didn't follow the proper um, okay. protocol and the rules. Just because uh, somebody may have granted an annulment when it shouldn't have been doesn't make the annulment process bad. It just means it's not being followed. Um, okay. th th that's that's the key. Uh, the, the true annulment process, when you read it and you study it, is it's beautiful. Yes. It's, it's, it's beautiful. As Total valid. agreement. It makes complete sense just because it was not followed, just because it was not taken into consideration, because yeah. there should be no more no answers than yes answers to the question of annulment. The fact that that's not been the case, yes, that's a problem. And, and we'll have to but again, it. that doesn't make all annulments wrong or the, or the annulments are not a proper part of the church's authority. It is, but, but you just have to look at you know the diocese should should strive to 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 grant annulments only that truly fit yeah. in those categories. Uh, you know, like if if somebody getting married was only getting married to become a citizen, um, that's you not know, a valid marriage. No, it's that's 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 absolutely not acceptable. So those are cases where <clears throat> it's easy, yeah. but um, I you know a lot of people think infidelity is automatically no it's not mm -hmm. um, you know somebody got married they had the full intent to be faithful but twenty years later they decide to cheat um, no that would not be grounds what what it means is at the time of the marriage what was present what was present at the time of marriage yes. were they yes. baptized were they married under canonical form uh, were they of their own free will were there any impediments. You know, if, if if all those were in line, then there is a valid marriage and you can't nullify that for Jesus yes. Christ.